because a lot of times we will only love people after they done got themselves right. So you think your life is not going as well as you think it should be? Well, I'm here to tell you, just because there's some things that are unfinished, doesn't mean your life is incomplete. We're going to get right into it. Let's go. You have reached the I'm Dealing With broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. Stay tuned as we talk about today's topic of incomplete. We're going to get right into it. Hey, hope everybody is having a blessed day. I'm Sean, your host. Welcome to another edition of the I'm Dealing With broadcast. Today, we're going to deal with a topic of incomplete. I uh, coined this topic incomplete because when I look back over my life, sometimes you think to yourself that there are many times at many different occasions that you find things undone. And if you were to look back over your life, I'm sure you even find some things that in your life that are undone. Think about uh, maybe your education, certain things maybe undone. You know, you have that if I could have, would have, should have mentality, you know, right out of high school. Maybe I should have went to college. Maybe I should have finished my high school education. Maybe I should have went to college, J.C., Maybe I should have uh, tackled that master's degree right after I finished my bachelor's. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, hey, I should have maybe took that business opportunity. Maybe I should have went into the service. Maybe I should not have went into the service. Maybe I should have waited to get married or I wish I would have never got married. I wish I would have taken the opportunity to have children when I was younger versus when I'm older or maybe I should have tried to have children and now I'm a little bit older and I wish that you know I should have done something at an earlier age versus now I don't have children you know when we look back over our lives we think to ourselves that there's plenty areas of our our life that is not just undone but we feel incomplete Do you ever feel incomplete, maybe in your business, maybe in your family dynamic where things are just incomplete? I'm sure there are times when those of you that are listening, when you were younger, that you had parents, maybe a father and or a mother who would ask you to do something, you know, whether it was doing the dishes, cleaning the kitchen, mopping that floor, cleaning that bathroom, maybe making up your own bed. And sometimes we do what we call a half, you know, what job, you you know what I'm saying? You know, we just don't give it our hundred percent. We just give whatever we want to give to it. Right. And we think that the job is done because, you know, we took the spread and we just, you know, threw it on the bed and made it look better than what it was. But that's not how mom wanted done. Mom or dad wanted it done. They want the sheets tucked. They want the spread tucked in. They wanted everything. Maybe you came from a military environment where, you know, they came in with that nickel or that quarter or whatever, want to bounce the quarter off that bed to make sure it was taken care of. Maybe you were asked to iron clothes and you just did it any old kind of way, you know, that kind of cockamamie thing that many of us do that we're younger and hate to say it. Some people still do it when they're older and they iron that shirt or whatever that is any old kind of way and then they don't get the perfect or the right result and they have to do the job maybe you're a boss or a ceo you're some type of person in management maybe you're a supervisor where you ask associates or your employees or those that serve you or serve under you you ask them to do a certain job and they give you any old kind of thing Maybe you're an HR representative and you have different ones under you. Maybe they're trying to come under employment. They're trying to get a job. They're trying to do their resume. They're trying to fill out that application. And you have already given them 
all the prerequisites before coming into the workplace. You must have the, your resume. You must have a, uh, a letter. You must have the application filled out. And then they come in and they didn't go to the website to fill the application. They didn't submit their resume and they didn't have uh, any type of letter of reference or some of that sort. And then all of a sudden they get mad because they were turned away because they were incomplete. Maybe you have a child that's doing something right now that's incomplete. Your parent and you're missing something in your life. Um, maybe it's some type of business venture, some joint venture. Maybe you're a single parent and you're missing out on that husband or your wife, uh, excuse me, or your husband missing out on that wife and you feel incomplete. Maybe you're a couple that don't have kids and you feel incomplete. Maybe you're a family full of children and you're missing that house to call your own and you feel incomplete. Maybe you have a car that you're using and or borrowing and or maybe you're taking public transportation and you feel as though because you don't have something that you can stick the key in and start your own engine, you feel incomplete. Maybe there's an opportunity in your life that you would have loved to take advantage of and you decided to bypass on and you see that opportunity now flourishing and you think to yourself, if I got in on the ground floor. I could have been a lot better off than where I am. And you feel incomplete your education right now that you're going through and you see all the different things. And now you're in your forties and fifties, maybe in your thirties. And you wish that you would have left high school and went on to uh, finish that post-secondary college degree. And then you feel a little incomplete. Maybe you're a person of religious background and you or, or you want to be and you think to yourself that, yes, I'm a God fearing man or I'm a God fearing woman. But then but there's something in your life and you feel like you're incomplete. Well, I'm here to let you know, uh, guys and gals, that there's always going to be time and opportunities in your life where something is missing and you have that sense of incompleteness in your life. Not every time and season where everything is just going to be fitly joined together at every single time in your life. There's going to be some times where you're going to go through some struggles that you're going to go through and make some bad calls and miss out on opportunities and not follow through on things which will cause you to have areas in your life of incompleteness. I'm here to let you know that just because you feel incomplete or have thoughts of incompleteness, those different areas that you lack in don't define who you are. And many times when you find out that when you are incomplete, you will find and lean on the areas where you are complete because a lot of times, you know, they have a saying, I know Judge Lynn said this on divorce court many times. She said, if you keep looking for negative things, you're going to find it. And if we focus on the negative all the time, how then shall we ever accentuate the positive? We won't. We will never accentuate the positive, focusing on the negative, focusing on the incompleteness, focusing on the mistakes that we made, focusing on the relationships that we burned or somebody else burned, focusing on the people that who may call you or not call you back. Focus on the missed job opportunities, the missed business ventures, the missed career opportunities, the missed education opportunities. If we continue to focus on on the things that weigh us down so much. How then shall you ever give to help people and, and yourself, those who love you the most? We'll never have enough when we focus on our incompleteness. When we only focus on the negative, we will never accentuate the positive and do better. Because the goal is in everything that we do is to lift people, is to build them, to mentor them. And we've got to take our incompletenesses and we have to take the things that we've made mistakes on, take the things that we didn't do so well on and teach it to the next generation to let them know that they can go further by following the mistakes that I made. Look at my mistakes. Don't make them. 
That road down there has a dead end on it. You see where it says detour? Don't keep going straight because there's a cliff right there. Make that right turn like it says. It's in your incompletenesses where if you lean on those and you take those incompletenesses, those feelings in your life and you say, you know what? I'm going to use this negative and I'm going to turn it into a positive. I'm going to take these lemons and make lemonade. It's all in perspective. Sometimes we have to change our perspective to go from seeing things as a glass half empty to a glass half full. And if we always focus on the half full, the half emptiness of our lives, we'll never change it to a half full. Because the goal at any given point in our life is to always look at things from a positive perspective, because in order to in, in the infect and change a generation, we first then have to be changed within ourselves. And it starts with those of us that are listening to this podcast right now. It starts with us. It starts with us men. Because if we don't change our mindset, if we don't change our structures, if we don't change our beliefs, if we don't change how we entreat people. How will we change and affect others? Because right now, if we're not changing our mindset and we're always staying negative, best believe you are infecting a generation. But the key word is you're infecting them, not affecting them. You know, there is a different a difference. Because when you infect them. You're infecting them in a negative connotation, in a negative matter, because they see your negativity. They see the bitterness in your heart. They see the loneliness and the despair. They see the anger and the anxiety. They see the depression and the lack of love on your life. And what happens is they become a generation of people just like you. And it's only then that we thereby can then change a generation by showing them love. By showing them long suffering, by showing them a friend, by showing them somebody who is positive, by showing them a mentor, by showing them a leader, by showing them someone that they can be trusted. And everybody wants to be wants to trust in somebody. Somebody always wants to go to someone that they can talk to, somebody that they can lean on when they're in their lowest point. And it's a lot of times it's in our incompleteness that we refine the biggest strength in our lives when we get out of really understanding that, hey, this is a negative. Hey, yeah, I didn't do that. I didn't handle that right. I should have did that. I should have said, I'm sorry. I should have apologized. I should have did that right. I shouldn't have stole that. I shouldn't have cheated here and I shouldn't have did that. When you take all that and you put it all together and you go, guess what? This is now a teaching session. <laughs> yeah, this is this is not the time to wallow wallow in the mistakes this is not time to sit and uh, um sit in the closet and soak and cry this is the time to really first number one you have to start off by forgiving yourself i i i didn't do it right i didn't peter paul and mary i we didn't do it right we didn't do everything that we should have but i'm sorry that i didn't do it right i have to forgive me right I have to look in that mirror and say, you know, I forgive me. I forgive me. I, I give you permission to move forward. Because I read a quote, the, the biggest jail that many people are in or is a jail that they put themselves in by not forgiving themselves. By worrying about what other people think, by worrying about how other people feel, by worrying about how other people treat them or entreat them. And it's only then that you can realize you say, you know what? It's not even about them. It's about me, because, you know, what? at the end of the day, you can do all things right. And folk will still mistreat you because the way you look, maybe the, the clothes that you have on. Maybe you don't have the right car. You don't have the right house. You don't make enough money. You don't have the long hair, blonde hair, whatever the case may be. People will people will be people. But it's up to you to make a change within yourself to say, you know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to be like everybody else because there's a generation after me. There's my children. There's my grandchildren. There's my nieces. There's my nephews. There are people down the street that I have to uh, affect, not infect, but affect. I have to be so I have to be so uh, infectious. 
in a, such a good way that when I'm gone, it outlasts me. This thing keeps going. It has to outlast you when you're gone. My question to you is what will you leave behind? Will you focus can continue to focus on your incom incompleteness? Or will you use that as a thrust, as permission, as a tool to move you into the next millennium, whatever that is, into the next step, into the next growth, into the next mentorship, into the next leadership? Will you use that negative <laughs> and turn it into a positive? You know, if you look at it back in the days and many of you that are mathematicians, you would know that in addition and subtraction that two, there is no way that two negatives will equal a positive. Right. But when you multiply. <laughs> well, OK. You have to understand that you've got to take your negatives and turn them into a positive. How can I touch somebody? How can I help somebody? How can I help move somebody to get off of their seat and do nothing? How can I help someone to be an overcomer? How can I teach someone else that they can also win? How can I help someone and lead them into their next dispensation of whatever it is that they want to go into? It first starts with us. It starts with us. Once we get off of our seat of woe is me, once we get off of our seat of complaining and murmuring and complaining about different things that didn't happen to us or the things that we lacked or the things that we missed out on. Once we get into the point to where we realize that we could have done some things better, but you know what? It's time to help others. But you do understand that as long as you still have the activity of your limbs and you still have breath in your lungs and you're still breathing, that you have plenty of time to achieve the very things that you feel incomplete about. Now, I understand when it comes to children that sometimes, you know, our bodies aren't what they used to be. But, you know, in this time and space of where we are in this century. There are many different scientific ways of having children. There is still adoption. <laughs> and you know what? There is somebody waiting, waiting to be adopted right now. For those of you that listen, there's somebody waiting to, to be adopted by you. As a father, as a son, as a sister, as a brother, Uh huh. you thought I was going the other way, but somebody is looking for you. They're looking for you to come alongside them and say, hey, I can make it. They're looking for you to say, hey, finish that project. They're looking for you to say you can do it. Don't give up. They're looking for you to, to come alongside, cry with them and encourage them and say, OK, now we didn't cry. Now let's fix this thing. They're looking for you. Someone's waiting to be adopted by you in the midst of your incompleteness. Because there's a mandate on your life. There's something that you've been called to do. There's a boy or a girl that's waiting on you, waiting on you to level up, waiting on you to man up, waiting on you to lead them, waiting on you to guide them and encourage them and love them in the midst of their mess. Because a lot of times we will only love people after they done got themselves right. Because when we love people in the midst of where they are, Man, if you can only imagine the results that you can receive some, from someone. A lot of times until you cut your hair, oh, until you put on these clothes, until you hang out with this person, until you come to this level of respect, until you make this amount of money, until you have this type of car, until you have this type of house or live in this type of area, only then will I socialize with you. That's not what's supposed to happen. Because if you were to look back, somebody came alongside and helped you. Somebody came alongside and mentored you. And if they didn't, it would seem as though to me that you wouldn't do to others. That was done unto you. Because in my life, I've had to look back and say to myself, how would I want me to approach me? And it's only then when I see myself in them that I can actually affect change. I have to love them like I would love myself.
I have to treat them the way I would want to be treated. I have to hold them and cry with them the way I would want somebody to hold and cry with me. I have to be able to listen to them the same way I would want somebody to listen with me. I've got to be able to mentor them the same way I would want to be mentored. I'd have to lead them the same way that I would want to be led. And even in your incomplete stuff, stuff that's undone, stuff that you haven't finished, stuff that you think is a negative in the midst of it. Turn it around because I'm here to let you know somebody is waiting on you. And in the midst of wherever you are, life is not over. In the midst of things being undone, in the midst of things being incomplete in your life, someone is waiting on you. Mentor them, love them, and be there. I'm Sean, your host. Stay tuned for another edition of the I'm Dealing With Broadcast. And as always, be blessed.